Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Extricated. I'm KB and with me here is DDB and we are here with another episode for you guys. And finally, yes, he did not refer to me as his sidekick. Mm. <laughs> Please rest. So David, what do you want to talk about? Uh, okay, <laughs> fine. So, um, you know, there was a time, there was, I think, a week ago, a two weeks ago, I saw a video about uh, economic hitmen, and that was my first time of uh, hearing of what they call economic hitmen, and it was on Al Jazeera. And when I watched it, it was a documentary story, right, um, on Decode, a show called Decode. Mm. And um, when I watched it, I was very, very interested. I posted it on my was going to alter status. Then KB sent me the book of John Perkins, the person <laughs> that authored the book, The Economic Hitman. Confessions of an Economic Hitman. Yeah, Confessions uh, of the Economic Hitman. <laughs> so, in this episode, we are going to be talking about economic hitmen and trying to understand what John Perkins was talking about. Do they really happen? Is it true? Yeah. And, or is, or is we it... actually have to ask that question. Does this really happen? Or because is it conspiracy, conspiracy it's, it's, theories? It feels a little James Bondy to us. Prior to this recording, I went and watched his TED talk on the book, right? Mm. And he was saying that he is not a conspiracy theorist, mm. he is a conspiracy factual theorist. A factualist. <laughs> yeah, factualist. <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay. I didn't watch that. Yeah, anyway, what he means by that is that um, it's he gives you facts. It's not, con- yeah, he, there are theories, yeah, but he gives you facts. However, he cannot tell you secrets, though he told those stories about what really happened, the um, the result of certain things, why certain things, why certain agreements were not made, and how if you don't take uh, agreement, it's more like they're going to give you two options, right? Uh, one options where one option where you gotta do this, or I have a gun pointed at your head. <laughs> now, the gun pointed at your head is not a literal gun; it's a threat. That you've just got to figure out as a smart Actually, person. It's a literal gun based, based on what is you it, said. Yeah, it's literal. It's well, literal we'll gun. That. <laughs> <laughs> right? We'll get into that. Right? We'll get into that. The the thing the thing with this this particular topic is that, or this particular book, is that yes, it was a bestseller. I understand, but then the reception was still a little bit wanting because a lot of people came and said that oh he's a conspiracy theorist like you said and stuff yeah. and he had to in his TED talks he had to make sh- he had to make people understand try to make people understand that oh i'm not a conspiracy theorist or the, consp- um, the conspiracy factualist and whatnot anyway what we are going to do today is to like just talk a little bit about um economic hitmen and then we will talk about the techniques that they use yeah. in uh what's it called in taking yeah, pound of flesh. Yeah, and you know <laughs> the funny thing is that yeah, um, after the book, he released the book in what, what the initial reading? book was released in two thousand and four. Yes, and then after that, he released another one, the New Confession. Um, I was made to understand that it was basically banned, mm-hmm. and it was initially banned. The first book was banned, but I think it has to do more with some. Maybe it wasn't to what the publishers like or something like that. Maybe okay. mm. so the one I actually read was the new confession. New confession of an economic hitman. That was one that came out in twenty sixteen. Yeah. So a lot had changed between the time he released the first book and and yeah. the second book. So yeah. he tried to account for that in the second book. But you know, um there's one thing that is very clear about what he did in the book is he gave you um certain ways that economic hitmen right operate and all that right then jackals and all that however right um during this episode we're going to really tell you start with first what's an economic what's an hitman, economic hitman, yeah, is, hitman yeah. is and then we're going to tell you how they really operate mm. right now in the world examples of of how they do on the global sense because you know the book is more like exposes what they do yeah so did they, did they really stop yeah. That's another question, right? Or, or, maybe, or maybe they rebranded. <laughs> they rebranded. You understand? <laughs> in my in my own opinion, I feel based on the research I made, I think they rebranded. But it's, it's the same thing basically. But mm. they they rebranded. 
Mm. Anyway, they made they made it look posh. <laughs> Some excellent. But anyway, <laughs> like Kimi, what okay. is uh, what is what is the term What's economic, economic hitman? hitman? Mm. I mean, by now you 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 are already familiar with the term hitman. I mean, maybe from watching movies, from playing the video game Agent Forty Seven, <laughs> knowing knowing Call about of duty. <laughs> knowing about people that are hired to pay them um, to take out guys take by take out. I mean, assassinate, yeah, assassinate, take, assassinate a, a particular, a, a particular people, a set, a set of people. So it's kind of similar to that an economic hitman is basically a very highly paid economist that is in the business of tricking governments into taking into signing um loans or taking up debts that will basically cripple them and allow their country to lose so much money so much of their not just money their resources also and you know even in fact their prosperity they are basically like like we say here they are buying your destiny <laughs> <laughs> that, that's essentially what they do that's how that's that's the job that they are paid for you understand okay so, so let, let, let me bring it down to this level yeah so imagine kb is a country ddb is, a, is like an economic hitman right mm. i come to kb country. why am i the country <laughs> You know, the fun part is actually the economic hit man. <laughs> so, um, KB, I, I come to KB country, right? Um, and then I say, KB, you know that this sector of your of your economy is really is is, is has a lot of potential. And uh, you have when you do this and you do this and you do that, you're going to have 90% um, conversion rate, 90% growth in the human I- index, 90% mm. um, employment rate. Uh, the kind of um, what's it called? It's going to raise the level of your country when it comes to internally um, revenue generated and compared to other countries as a third world country, right? Mm. It's really going to help you big time. Right, um, but you, but you need to take this depth from this particular and uh, to be able to do this. I'm they not have, taking. They have. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Okay, so imagine, <laughs> imagine, imagine if, and they said it better than how I just did anyway. <laughs> they do an exceptional job, right? Based on what John Perkins said. So, um, when if KB country now takes it, right? What happens is that. Everything he, everything they did was just selling a product that does not work or something that yes. will not work, right? They mm. already know that it will not work. So yeah. you think about buying, going to, <laughs> let, me not, let me not say a specific market, uh, but going to the market and buying a phone. Uh-huh. They show you that how this phone works, blah, 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 but they take it to the back and unknowingly to you, un- <laughs> <laughs> they go and they switch it. They probably go and like mold it and put inside phone case. I think you are just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> they give you, t- you, you, you thought that you bought a new phone, a uh, very nice phone for maybe yeah. like 100k or something like that, mm-hmm. and then you go back home and then you do, you try to turn it on and boom, it's not working. You know, like what's going on? Yeah, you try, 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 and maybe something makes you to open it and then you're not gonna see that. It is something that you can eat with a greasy soup that is inside the yeah <laughs> that is inside the um, <laughs> phone basically yeah so that's essentially what happened so but I, but that's that's not the end anyway right mm-hmm. when you figure out that's a KB country now when yes. you figure out that you cannot like pay them back right mm-hmm. there are different ways in how they can I was it called they can now cripple you oh, now. Even, no sorry before that mm-hmm. before that yeah you can either be dumb enough to go for it yes. like I said like when I said like what I said if you are like, uh, yeah, talk, talking about the we, phone we've, we've, we've even forgotten about uh, the gun we just gave you yes. the, the option yes. the first option but we're telling you about the I, I was telling you about the phone thing and like okay maybe you did not you did not shine your eye in yeah. quotes but you when you not, shine your um, eye you allow them to go into the back mm. and then you know do whatever it is that they're doing in the back without you monitoring them and stuff yeah. you just trusted them mm. so you can be dumb enough, dumb enough to accept the loan or desperate rather it may not necessarily be done but it might be desperate desperate, yes. desperate enough to accept that loan or you can see the things that are wrong with that loan yeah and then you now you now you, raise you now, you now raise alarms and say no i don't think i agree with this do you know that at the end of the day they are not going to argue with you right but when you say no and they try to convince you you still say no 
Mm. At the end of the day, they will put a gun right to your head. It's <laughs> either you, you are, no, it's not even it's either you accept or not. No, mm. after they finish convincing you, and you still say no, they are not even going to come back and even negotiate with you. The next thing is something will happen. Something tragic mm. will happen. So you understand something tragic. In- either either an accident happens to you, and mm. you just you're out of you. Yes. You understand, and they bring someone. That is going to someone they can control. They can control. You understand? Yes. Ask, that, so that. so these these things happen. The the economic hitman basically how they operate is that it's not like as if they are going to like come out with the guns like you just said. Now they are not even the ones operating. Yeah, the guns. they are not even what, the ones operating the guns. Do, yeah. What they do is to operate papers. Mm. That's, that's their own specialty. Yeah. Like I said, they are economists, right? Yeah. So they go, they make a report. They're like, okay, this is what this country is lacking. This is where we can enter through 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 this um through this gate and we'll be able to convince them yes. right okay your country needs your country has oil we need to build <coughs> pipelines mm. we need to build pipelines but then you don't you don't have what it takes to build those pipelines that you're talking about yes you understand they so give you options they give you options basically so based on that report they say they will like give you some beautiful like let me call it feasibility studies mm-hmm. you know they 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 give you all that and like look so remarkable if you don't have competent economists in your country and the funny thing is that bro do you know that it's not just one option that they're going to give you they're going to give you different options from different places where to actually loan this money mm. different places yeah so which means if you look at it they are the people that are actually behind them trying to control you are working with these particular yes, positions. Yes, yes, yes. That's understand? very true. You get, mm. and then now, if you don't accept this, right? At the end of the day, so an accident will happen. Now, that's where the jackals come in. Yes, the jackals now come in. <laughs> the jackals are now the security companies, CIA's, whatever, whatever, right? Anyway, mm. let me be very point blank here. All this is conspiracy theories. <laughs> <laughs> it, right. it may be, it may not be. It may not be. But yeah. then you know the the thing about a writer is that the writer is going to make a book interesting, even if it's an, something like an autobiography. Yes. Because it's, that's essentially what this book is—an autobiography. Autobiography. You yeah. understand? And um, it's just your. I mean, sometimes, like I like I once mentioned, like your life is not that interesting. Mm. <laughs> it's not an insult, yeah. but, then, but your then, life is not. Like, nobody actually cares mm, about your life. Yes, but your stories. But if you're able stories, to tell your story yeah, really, well, really well, you understand. Yeah. Um, so, so we feel like a lot of a, a lot of things are true, but some he things said, can also be embellished. Yeah, exactly. And the CIA thing may or may not be true because yeah. we know that the CIA is so in the business of you know ousting governments and stuff like that. Yeah. But no one really has incredible. Anyway, they actually they actually used to accept it anyway mm. on the CIA website. You mm. you, you go there, yeah. they, they will actually tell you that they actually use this to actually yes, get this after particular how many country years, right? after years, right? Not mm. the current ones that actually mm. they actually doing. Now, so at the end of the day, right, the goal for economic hitmen or the people that are behind them, right, the architect of everything, is to just take control of that particular country, third world, co- yes. third world countries. Mm. And now, at the end of the day, if you don't accept. They're going to throw throw yes. you away and put mm. someone inside. And mm. if that, uh, what's it called? If you agree to it, right? Or if that person agrees to it, or you you agree to it, right? And the thing does not happen. The whole promise that they promise you did not happen. At the end of the day, what will happen now is that there are different ways that this will happen. Yeah. One, they're going to come and tell you, okay, fine, you need to pay us money, pay us back our money, mm. right? But then. Right? How are you going to pay us? How are you going to pay it back? Now, this is where the main thing is. And the resources that you have. Before you even reach that point, before you reach that point, (coughs) when they've already taken the loans, who is getting who is getting that money? It's like, okay, I have money, and I want to loan you to do something. Yeah. But that thing that you want to do, it is me that will still provide you that service. Exactly. So that money never left the shores of my country. Country. Exactly. But then I still have. The money are going to pay me back coming into the country. So it's more like uh, going to the, the economy, my own economy. Ju- just imagine mm. DDB now just came to KV country and then like just t- told him that he should get a loan. Yeah, at the end of the day, that loan is being paid to me. 
Yes. As the economy yes. hits yes. my my, so, my corporation. So, so the, 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 the because we're the ones to actually lay down the plan and all that. It's more like you're hiring us like to do construction it. companies, yeah. companies into oil and gas, mm-hmm. you know, providing different forms of technical support and whatnot. Yeah. Those are the those are the type of companies that can benefit from things like that. Yeah. So the there are business booms, mm-hmm. that country's economy booms also. Yes. And then the country that's taking the death is fought out. It takes a miracle for you to actually, you know, go through that and still be able to pay back those debts. I mean, it will yeah. take some years, but then still you'll you, be able you, to do you, it. You see some companies, like, I want you to just notice some patterns here, right? Um, you see some companies, they come into your country or a particular country, they'll come and do well. The company there will do well in that particular country, but guess what? The country itself, outside that particular country, in that particular industry, is not doing well. Mm. Imagine just mm. pull that company out of that country. Yes. That get that that country has nothing. You just get to understand that almost oh, well, that country has nothing. And that is a tactic that they use. Yeah. <laughs> if they operate based on fear. Mm-hmm. They want you to know that okay. This country, this company coming in now is going to give you some level of prosperity in quotes. Yes. But in reality, it's just a few people that are going to get that. Definitely, the people coming for bringing it are going to get richer. Yeah, you that you, brought it. You that brought it as uh, maybe the president, you as the president, or minister of finance. You're going to get. You are going to get richer. You're going to get richer big time. Especially if you are corrupt, yeah. Because because if they can cut you that deal, they will, they will definitely get you something, you know. Mm-hmm. And then, then let's say also some of the people that will associate with these guys might yeah. also be. I mean, take a con, take a continent like Africa or take a country like Nigeria. Yeah. You see a lot of people in government have family members that are into maybe contracts, work, and other type of things, providing yeah. materials, you know, running businesses that are related to this kind of infrastructural um, store exactly you, you understand yeah. so if they are going to say they are going to work with some local based companies who are those local based companies they are going to work with it's still going to be those guys those guys the elites so it's just like going to be a fraction of people that are going to make some serious money mm-hmm. then by trickle down economics some people are going to you know get something something then to the final yeah. people that are actually doing the work that the ones that are going so to far suffer yeah. because they are going to be paid cheap mm. you understand and especially in a country like Nigeria we have a lot of um, people in the country you know yeah. take take a lot of construction that's going on railways are being pro- um, constructed and whatnot laborers are working mm-hmm. you understand and then those people are not paid nearly enough you know money that that they deserve you compared to the compared depth, to the debt accru- accrued for that you particular project and that even depends on whoever is even supervising. Like mm-hmm. maybe if you have someone of like good conscience and whatnot, they pay them better. Yeah. Than you know maybe someone like oh yeah a liberal I just take whatever I give you. Yeah. yeah there are some people you know. So all those type of things happen. So they work based on that fear that okay if this company should leave my country, what can that that entire sexual sector is going to collapse? Mm-hmm. Understand? They can threaten to leave. Yeah. They can threaten to say okay. Fine, you, are li- as you, you don't want to do it our way, but we've already given you this thing. So we are going to leave, but you have to give us give us what we are owed, yes. right? You know. But so, then you don't have the money to pay. You don't have the money to pay. So, okay, so how off. are you going to pay? <laughs> you sell off, right? One is either you sell off your debt mm. to another company. Hmm. Now, one, we will tell you about how can, that can be very, very bad. Very, then very two, bad. Then two. Next thing you can do is say, okay, fine. Um, they they will even offer you this one very well. <laughs> they are going to mm-hmm. offer you, okay, fine. Um, you have these particular resources. You have these particular resources. Mm-hmm. Um, I think um, us being here for the next, uh, taking advantage of this for the next um, 10, 20 years, 25 years, mm-hmm. right? Um, the next 25 years, I think um, we're going to is going to be able to pay the debt off, yes. right? So at the end of the day. They get you sign a contract for 25 years mm. with them exploiting that aspect a particular aspect of your resources mm. and you can't do nothing about it yes. in the next 25 years and and guess what this are the this is where some things now come in right for example let's talk about the mining industry now right just imagine a country comes and says okay fine don't take advantage of your lithium for example mm. right hey that will, that, will, that will vex me up. E- just I'll imagine just imagine something happens my, my, my and then gold. 
at the end of the day, <laughs> right, just they, they get to say, okay, fine, um, they can now do whatever they want to do. Just see, out of nowhere, Nigeria has an agreement with so so and so to use lithium, to have lithium, to actually set up something in Nigeria for lithium and all that, to mine lithium in Nigeria and all that, right? So, and they will be doing it for funny thing is that they're not going to tell you for how long, yes. And there is like after 15 20 years, you come and notice that after the 20th year, they've already pulled out. Mm, mm. And guess what? They went after that, they've over, yeah. they've overused it. They've you understand, they've, you understand. <laughs> so, in fact, it's not even just the overusing itself. Okay, let's even let's even you are even you are using mining. Let us even talk about crude oil. That's even more specific uh, to us. You can have a situation where these people they come and do whatever it is that they want. Mm-hmm. They don't care. This is not their country. This is these are not their people. They don't really care. So look at all the um issues that we used to have before. I mean those things are those things are no longer pro- really really problems. I mean some of them might still linger, mm-hmm. but then they are not really problems like they were, like let's say maybe during the first um the first administration. Okay, let me not say that's not the first administration. Let me say during the early 2000s, mm-hmm. we used to have a lot of problems of like um, oil spillage, oil spillage into into the water bodies, um, problems of um, gas flaring and whatnot, like environmental challenges, mm-hmm. understand pollution and whatnot being caused by these people, and they won't do anything about it. And the government really cannot hold them, hold them accountable for that because yeah. of. Because of the deal that they basically struck with them, they can't because can. at that po- at that particular point they are the ones to even order you. Mm. <laughs> because you <laughs> you know they will even take take advantage of your country's population to like you know do you no know, cheap labor and yes. like I already mentioned yeah. you know all this about things yeah. like um as they are pillaging your resources they are also destroying the environment in the same in, you know they are destroying the- your communities destroying mm. the environment destroying the livelihood of people in your community yes. right so um, so how so how would you put, so you're affecting so is that the impact now you're having you're having problems you 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 impact the people's prosperity basically there will be poverty in the land mm-hmm. there will be health problems there will be you know even like how if you are if you are poor how do you get access to education you understand so there will be there will be the education level will be low yeah. you know so these are the kind of things like the people eventually suffer and then it, it, why why does this happen? Just because some people making the decisions made some bad decisions. Yeah. You understand? And sometimes it might not even necessarily be them coming from outside, it might be people from inside that will liaise with those people yes, outside. Like, exactly, okay, we yes. know how this internal politics works. So let us help you come into this. You give us a cut. Yeah, if they are exact. going to pay you they are going to pay you twenty million, they can <laughs> give me three million or four million out of it. Mm-hmm. You know, four million dollars. I'm, I'm, ri- I'm a rich man now. I know, right? I don't, like, I don't have to collect all the money they are collecting. If, if you look at it factually, right? Mm-hmm. Remove um, empathy on humans, um, mm-hmm. your people. Remove being patriotic, right? Mm-hmm. Now. It's simply business. It's not simply business. Right? It's, uh, it's business it's to them. Business. To them, it's business, and to them, it's control. Why? Because they are using themselves, and uh, like what he said, John Franklin said on his TED talk, right? He said. Only five percent of what's it called of the world actually less than five percent of the world stays in the US, yes. right? But then the United States of America use the world's most of the world's resources. Mm. Yes. How? I think using this something percent. You get using this same method, you understand, mm. based on what he said, yes. right? Now the second aspect of how they can do this, apart from using your resources, is some people now you can now sell your debt to a particular group. Mm. Right, more like, um, for example, let me, let me let me give you an example. For example, yeah, a particular club, Arsenal, for example, is owned by KSE, right? Um, Cranky Sport Entertainment. So what they did um, in during COVID period is that um, Arsenal had loans to repay. So what they did is that KSE, because Arsenal wants a self-sustaining model, mm. right? So KSE went and bought the debts that Arsenal had with other banks. Mm. So, which means right now, Arsenal owes KSE as an entity. KSE is an entity that owns Arsenal, mm. but then Arsenal owes, uh, what's it called, KSE, the money. Yes. Right? So, which means at the end of the day, 
KC still owns Arsenal, but there's a debt to still mm-hmm. pay. You understand? Um, so now they can help in that way. That's a healthy way, right? But in case of government, right? If a group or a particular bank comes and say they want to pay, they want to pay off your debt, mm. right? They are buying your debt. Yes. At the end of the day, you are indebted to them, right? Now, example, um, right? Is an example I have here is uh, what's it called? Um, Grace Church Capital, right? From Cayman Island. Now they <laughs> that, bought. That, that Cayman Island. Yeah. They bought a chunk of Cameroonian debt for nine point five million dollars. I guess what they did? They then sued Cameroon for nearly forty million dollars. As plunging you even deeper. Yes, because one they ca- you what's it called they realized that uh, what's it called and they actually did it del- deliberately. Yes, because they knew that when they buy the debt for Cameroon, it's just for a, t- a small time, and they know that. Cameroon cannot pay them back the debt. Mm. So fine. It's more like interest. So this is where the expression comes in. Yeah, exactly. Understand? So they already see that, okay, like you said, this debt cannot be paid. So they're now they're not coming in like like superheroes. You yeah. Know? This is where economic advice comes in. If you don't have strong economic advisors as a president or as a leader of any country, be really a president or prime minister or whatever this. it is, they're going to call for it. Time. And especially in a country like Cameroon, where it seems like, you know, that guy has like final say on everything. On everything. Yeah. So you see why, you see how it is possible for this to even happen. Mm-hmm. So maybe he, maybe he got the advice and he didn't listen, or maybe he doesn't even have the advice at all. Yeah. You understand? Or maybe, despite everything, he was like, that's the only we way. know, we That's know that we thing. know that this is like striking a deal with the devil. But then, based on the expression, let us take it. I wonder how much the death was. But then, nine point five million doesn't sound like a like a big thing. Doesn't sound like that that big a deal. For so it's like okay, no, I can <laughs> just take care of some of your debts. You mm. understand? I can take care of it. Let me buy it. Mm. You understand? Mm. Then you can. So maybe we, we, can, now, we, can, we can now million. we can now work together mm. to like pay off the debt. Yes. Like, we can, know that. So they oh, give you that nine point five million now. I say okay, you want to go and pay it off. So I don't. And of then the, you do. They sell off that. They actually kind to you. They actually mm. want to help you. But at the end of the day, they actually want to help you. Mm. They actually want to sue you. Why? Because they want to take advantage of your resources in mm. your country. It's more like they've taken over. <laughs> uh, what's it called? What the economic hitmen have taken like it's more like how i'm going to see it um someone just came to your country and then took use their what is it called um the industry the crude or the petroleum industry for example mm. right and then they bought debt for that but then they they are not into petroleum industry they want the mining industry mm. so they paid and it's okay fine their target is that okay no matter at the end of the day you just want to get into that mining resources mm. in the mining industry right mm. so you can't pay fine you want the mining industry mm. you get so at the end of the day that is more like they're taking turns yes they're taking turns on it, you. it's basically scramble for, scramble for africa all over again exactly i wanted to use this uh, what's it called um uh what's it called this time you're getting fucked multiple times by this different is a, this people. Is a PG show, please. <laughs> you get so um, that. See, at the end of the day, yeah, it's it's really appalling. It's not. It doesn't make sense. And then the point thing is that countries keep falling for it. Mm. For example, like the Tanzania, Cam- the Cameroon that you were even talking exactly about. Exactly. For this, actually, like three, three times. times. <laughs> you get so there's an example. You know, you know the saying: "Fool me one time, shame on you. Fool me twice, I can't put the blame on you." You get <laughs> like they fool you once, twice, three times, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Now, um, jackals. Um, now, do, do we need to explain what jackal? I mean, not really. Okay, so fine. Jackals are the people that just carry out the whole uh, what's it called? The order mm. on. If everything, if this not, guy needs to go or not, yeah, if this guy needs to go or not, that's the only thing that that's what they do, right? <laughs> um, more like example is Osama bin Laden. <laughs> yeah, 
So I had the World Bank. <laughs> let me. Let, 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 this is very important, and I think I knew this before, but maybe this is just a confirmation for me. Mm-hmm. You understand? Like the World Bank sounds like a noble idea. Yes. Right. It's about helping the world, right? Not exactly, to be honest. The World Bank actually serves the interests of a select few who make the decisions about where the money goes. Mm. You understand? Fact is, over 185 countries jointly own the World Bank. But as we all know, that own does not mean anything to some extent. Mm. <laughs> but only, only representatives from eight countries serve on its governing body. Right? Or governing board. The US, Japan, Germany, France, UK, China, Russia, and Saudi Arabia. Guess what? Right? The president of the World Bank has always been an American. <laughs> That's very, very interesting. <laughs> very, very interesting, yeah. And if you look at the name if you look at the name of the countries here, I, they are not all they are not all of them. I did I didn't G it. I don't think they are. Saudi Arabia is not part of the G. They are not part of G. Yeah. Yes. But right? Is, are they? Is, I don't think they are. <laughs> if, they, if they are, I'm surprised <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but anyway. But they are still the who's who of the global economy. Yes, they are still the who's who of the global economy because they have the money. <laughs> uh, they have they have the highest world reserve <laughs> world oil reserve mm. you get. So yeah, another example here is um now this is an example of how example of economic hitman basically right now eric holder right is a person is basically the u.s a former u.s attorney general so holder retired from his position as u.s attorney general to rejoin covington and bowling now covington and bowling is his former law firm right now covington and bowling clients like the client list of that company right of that law firm includes bank of america jp morgan Wells Fargo City Group. These are <laughs> these are major financial companies. <laughs> All these banks are also clients that hold and refused to prosecute for their role in the financial crisis. Crisis, and what was his reason? His reason is that America cannot afford to uh, cannot afford to prosecute them because if we prosecute them, the economy is going to go down. So what does that mean? A certain group of what's it called companies, a group of companies are holding the country ransom because yes. you cannot take them out, you cannot prosecute them. If you prosecute them, mm. that's the end. I mean, like Yet, I want, I want to, I want so to even you... go back to what you even said about World Bank. <coughs> mm-hmm. The World Bank. It sounds like a really great idea. <laughs> it sounds like, all right, like you know. You know, everyone's like, okay, there's a bank for the world. Like, I mm-hmm. even remember when yeah. I was a child, I was like, wow, world bank. bank. So, like, that's, 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 so sounds, cute. that's, that's sounds... nice. <laughs> <laughs> but then, you know, I mean, like I said earlier, mm-hmm. we've had like a lot of, in quotes, experts mm. when this, when his book came out saying that, okay, this was a conspiracy theory. Yeah, I'm, this was, this was the work of a conspiracy theorist. And, yeah, and then the, Said that oh okay this man is just talking out talking out of bees and stuff but then there are some people that have also confirmed and then there have also been research that mm-hmm. also like points the other direction yeah. so sometimes it's more like why are try why are trying to pull you one way you see something that pulls you the other way too yeah, yeah. I mean um there was a there was a report in about I think it was in 2015 that told how the World Bank broke its promise to protect the poor and it documents the people that were displaced by world by the world bank basically either physically or economically mm. based on a loan that has been given to the country and then the country cannot service that debt it said that from 2004 to 2013 the bank's projects physically or economically displaced um an estimated 3.4 million people and this happened in countries like honduras india kenya peru and nigeria this happened in all these countries and in fact if you um check the Posts, it was on Huffington Post, and that project started basically with Lagos States. Mm-hmm. Started with Lagos, mm-hmm. so that was that was how the story started on their website, mm-hmm. you know. And then even the United Nations itself 
has already come out you know they've argued against the whole the whole um thing sometimes you hear you hear even the world bank sometimes they give you they give you one thing and it's make it make it sound like you know something like even so many years ago the united nations like they held a study and they were like they claimed that do no money is basically strangling third world nations uh-huh. understand you know the concept of the global north and the global south yes. you understand so the the way it is designed just like colonialism uh-huh. was it went during the colonial times you had um you had resources basically flowing from the global south that is the third world countries yeah. to the colonial masters yeah. which are the global north okay. so essentially this is how the system is still working but it's just a different a different way yeah you understand so they're saying that okay this um this aid money that they're giving to these countries is basically running them down they are giving donor money that comes with strings attached mm-hmm. you know it's caused the value of that aid to mm-hmm. about 25 to 40 percent mm-hmm. you understand so because why because these countries now they are now of lives they are forced to go and buy products from those countries mm. that are providing the aid yeah. these products that they are going to buy are not competitively priced yeah. you understand so mean, what does that mean it means that they are they are very highly priced mm-hmm. so they give you money and then you must buy from them if mm. if there's a product like i can buy for 20 naira but then that country is offering to me for 100 naira you understand I must go and buy that one for one even though I can buy for, for 20 and from a, from a neighboring country self. Mm-hmm. You understand? So those things those things happen and then I know at the end of the day it still makes it makes them it makes their country uh what's it called stronger. Right? Yes. And uh, there's sometimes some... they'll say you should only buy in dollar. Yeah, why? You understand? Just to make their so, currency you know, stronger. Th- there's something uh, based, based on what you just said right now, yeah? Mm. Um Whenever you're looking at some investment that Nigeria made or other countries made, right, or anything that happens, right, mm. who is benefiting the most? What's the story behind the story? Yes, there's always a story behind the story. Yes, the true. story behind the story and the story behind that particular story will tell you what is really happening. Mm. So you know, you know, even based on what I think, that like for every one dollar that they give you, mm-hmm. about eighty cents is going back to the country. Exactly. So you know that act- the actual aid that you get is not even of the United Nations. I was saying the the, the aid is basically essentially cut 20, 20 to forty five percent. That twenty percent says like that is where it's supposed to even stand mm-hmm. because of that. So you know, at the end of the day, like and let me tell you something, right? Uh, um, some some countries have realized this. There were certain countries, uh, in the Western countries. But especially African countries, they are falling for a new one. Yes. Why? Because, like, an example, for example, CCECC now, for example, in Nigeria, this construction construction company, yes. for example, right? You mentioned earlier that um, an investment, you see, they have what's it called, a, an agreement with a particular company, right? Yes. But then the money does not come into the country. Money doesn't come to the country. Right, they loan you money for construction, but it never, business, leaves, but it never, never leaves China. It never leaves China. It just it still stays in China. You just see their stuff inside Nigeria. <laughs> That's all. Because anything they spend is not in Nigeria. They spend everything over there in yes. China. So at the end of the day, the money we spend doesn't come to Nigerian economy. Yes, so it goes back to them. All they just do is like build build a certain infrastructure. That's just what know. they do. You know, to you know, sometimes it might just be like a legacy pro- project. Yeah. But some of those things are actually still things that you can use to generate money to pay back loans. Yeah. So, exactly. um, China basically has been giving loans that are either low interest or no interest. Yeah. That is where China differs from the and other. I th- and I think that's mm-hmm. why that, that that's why countries like Nigeria and other a countries lot of them have been running to China. Have been running to China because of that. And I think he even mentioned it in the new book. Mm. He talked about it. I think he was talking about Ecuador. So I think was it a president or somebody related to the like um, this in, in the top tiers of the government basically yeah. said that they rather borrow from China than. Yeah from the USA. Yeah. Understand? And he said why. And he also said that 
But John Perkins himself said that it doesn't necessarily mean that China are actually good guys. Understand? But he noted that then he noted that I think it was back in 2015. Mm-hmm. He noted them that they don't really attach strings to it. They did mm-hmm. not say that you must come and be buying in the Chinese yuan. They did not say that you should come and be buying in. Um, you should come and be buying all their products and whatnot. Mm-hmm. They did not say that you should come and vote certain things, certain ways in the UN. Mm-hmm. And he he now noted that he's waiting to see if those things will change. And largely, those things have changed. You see. <laughs> so many things, so many countries in Africa vote in favor of China. Yeah. When it comes to UN and whatever, whatever any any matter involving China yeah. on the UN stage. I, and the funny thing that majority you know, of the is, countries vote in favor you know, of China. You know, the in funny, Africa. Yeah. The funny thing is that yeah, um, it's not legally, it might not be legally printed that you have to support China. I think yes. it's word of mouth. Yes. That agreement more like, of mouth. Okay, we give you this money, but you have to support us when this when this comes. Yeah. Or we don't give you so so so. so. You understand? Or we maybe do the so, next time we they are, do something. Mm, maybe the next time they are embarking on a project, mm-hmm. they decide that oh okay, well, we want to favor our friends. Kind of like a like playground economics. Yeah. You favor you favor only your friends. Mm-hmm. You bring your ball to school. Yeah, and like, when my friends are going to play, friends are going to play. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so something like that can occur. Mm-hmm. You know, they say, okay, based on what, based on your actions, we are not going to provide you with this incentive that we're providing to other African countries yeah. right now. You know that kind of thing. So that that happens. You know, so China is basically the new kid on the block. Don't don't, don't be su- don't be surprised. Most of these countries that are saying no to Tesla or lithium, right? Mm-hmm. They're going to say yes to China. <laughs> Who knows? I know. I'm not joking. You be. Hey, <laughs> 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 hey, why? Because China will offer them what they are looking for. But China's goal right now is not to colonize you. China's goal right now is to take over the economic superiority. Mm. Right. That's the whole point. Mm. And for them to do that, they really need to appear very friendly. And less yes. risky. You know, I you get. I mentioned something about that Ecuador conversation. Yeah. The man said that he rather would he would uh, not vote rather he rather collect loans from China, China than US. Yeah. So he was he was he was talking about the whole thing. He was like that. But China is doing the same thing. China is doing the same thing that USA were doing and stuff. Yeah. But then the guy now argued that the Ecuadorian guy now argued that. Yeah. Um, but China, they are doing like that's what I call it the invasion basically, yeah. like going into countries like trying to put some military presence and whatnot yeah, yeah. so that they do they don't really do that and that then you then said that they, they actually do it and i say yes but those are countries that chinese believe were part of their empire of old uh, that because you know if you check it it's asian yeah, countries yes, yes. taiwan and other other, other but that was then that was then no uncle. now like i said things have changed <laughs> yes. you understand uh-huh. so there is it's like US went all the way from America to the Middle East to, to wage war and all that yeah. kind of based on certain. So now things. this is their own time to do that thing. It's more mm. like they are now, um, but they are doing it in a different way. They are doing it in a different way, actually. You understand? Mm. They are doing it in a different way, in a different also that like you don't. It's more like the same trick but different method. Mm. The same trick but different method. Um. So at the end of the day, right? What's the verdict? What do you think the verdict is? <laughs> So, do like, I think is it is it true? Do I think do I think that? Do you think economic hitmen? I think we've already give it give you it out <laughs> during this hour uh, rant. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, yeah, we I believe. actually believe that it exists. I actually believe. Well, honestly, maybe not to the extent in which he stated in the book. Maybe to that extent, but we don't know. We see the pattern. That's the thing. But there are patterns. We see the patterns. Yeah, you understand. So. That and to be honest, if you, if you look at if you look at it if you look at it to some extent, if you're looking for power, if you're looking to if me and KB, if we are countries that want to consolidate power and get mm-hmm. superiority, trust me, we'll do that same thing. Yes. I'm looking out for myself, I'm looking out for my country. I want us to be superior, right? Maybe I will go at it in the in a different way, right? But I'll still try and Go into other countries just to get uh, is it not say manipulate but manipulate and try and understand 
um, how I can get their friendship. Yes. So that I can use mm. whatever they have mm. to my own advantage. Your own advantage. You understand? Advantage. I will try and do that. You understand? At the end of the day, removing emotions and all that. To be able to do that, you actually need to do the worst things possible. <laughs> That's just it because it's, it's like it's like a banker giving the task of you know um, securing big loans, like yeah. giving big loans to people. You know, mm-hmm. you know that's how you advance in your career. But, but like let's even wait, wait, but so let, some of those let's people look at it as a normal thing. Let, they look at it as a business. Yeah, let's even bring it down to a minute level, self, right? Do you know that they can give you loans as a, as you as a small person, right? Mm. In Nigeria, they can give you loans, but at the end of the day, you're handing off their life, your life to them. No. Because you cannot travel out of this country without paying off that loan. No. Okay. Okay. You get. You cannot mm. have your freedom without paying off that loan, mm. right? So if you don't pay off that loan, you're in trouble. Yes. And for you to pay that loan, sometimes it will be hard. Some people, first of all, people is going to be extremely hard and not even possible. Mm. So they are already crippled. They are down. They are done. Mm. Okay. So on the uh, what's it called? Um, marketers, for example, bank marketers mm. that sell loans are actually economic hitmen. Yes. On the small scale. Mm-hmm. On the smaller scale, yes. You get. Mm. <laughs> so yes, that's verdict. So yeah, maybe any. <laughs> Anything for your wrap up? <laughs> oh, I have nothing more to say. Uh, really? <laughs> <laughs> it's just that this this has been one heck of a topic, and it's it's a topic that should make us, you know, research some more about this particular thing. We also have to be able to try to make sure that we hold our government accountable when it, when it comes to certain things question some certain decisions i mean there are there are some there are some non-governmental organizations that have um, <laughs> that have hey God, we've not talked about this was too <laughs> that have organizations but anyway no that's the way i'm going, <laughs> I'm going. that have dedicated themselves like to following the okay like an example now is follow the money mm. so what they do is that okay let's say a, a certain amount of money gets released i'm not even talking about loan or whatever yeah. gets released for a project they, so they, follow, they follow through to make yeah. sure that that project, that project is they um takes place from start to finish yeah. they, they are they, going to build a school and they, they follow through the money like did you actually use this particular yes. thing for this money or mm. and all that like, so how maybe you maybe we, we do need we do need um auditors something like that yes it needs organizations like that that you know spe- specifically like target you know like questions of certain things like yeah. okay how did you get the money to do this and what were the what were the steps that you took to you know what was what was the report given to you mm-hmm. what was what did your economic advisor say yeah. concerning this right. and also that, like and also very very important like um, that story that thing that uh, John Perkins said mm-hmm. what is the story behind the story mm-hmm. and what is the story behind that particular story mm-hmm. get to ask questions why why did they say you should do this like think like a conspiracy theories but every this is not just um, in the economic world in any any aspect of your life right if someone is telling you something why are they actually telling you this mm. why are they trying to why are they trying to convince you to do this yes, right? yeah what would they gain from that and even if mm. they gain from that what would that help them do mm. in the future or now right because at that point you get to say okay fine beautiful you get to control the narrative you get you can go with it but you can tell them okay well, let's adjust this to this they are smart they're very smart they're going to get a hold on to you and they either throw you out or you two you find a way to throw them out just mm. reverse psychology and all that yes. anyway um yeah that's a wrap from us and i actually enjoyed this discussion <laughs> though it's annoying that there are economic hitmen over the world all right so thank you very much for today yeah thank you for listening to this episode and let us know what you think about this topic i hope that we you know we provoke some thoughts <laughs> and that you know you interact with us yeah. on any of our social media channels um so yeah thank you for listening and peace out mm-hmm.